Hello, welcome to Life Source Youth Virtual. There is a virtual screen behind me and you are the virtual audience. Thank you so much for joining us. So if this is your first time and you are within the age bracket of seventh through college students, we would love to invite you to join us for our Zooms, which happen every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Central Time. This is the Zoom information in which you can be a part of this with us, which is 349-340-9902. And the password is youth with a capital Y. We want to see you there. We want to connect. We want to fellowship with you as the church body. Unfortunately, if you are not within this age bracket, we are not discluding you. We want you to start enjoying our premieres that will be happening live at 12 each Sunday Central Time. You can reach them just like you're reaching this video that you're watching right now with us. <laughs> So you have joined us for our series, which is the hands and the feet of Jesus. This is our series three, which is testimonies. And today we will be in the lovely land of Arizona. But before I get into that, we have a very special treat. And that's that our ones and our onlys, Zoe and Jaden, have done a great worship event for us to enjoy they performed oceans for us and we want to share this gift with you on this christmas season so please enjoy zoe and Jaden as we enter into worship together now please i want you also to be mindful that because of the the situation that happened in our church we're having to do everything virtual so they are giving they are all in this but each of them were recorded separately, not being able to hear the other. So we tried our best to do a merge of these two together with my wonderful cousin, uh, Andrew Fuentes, who, who did this gift for us, merging this media together. But I want you to also know that the heart is evident, the worship is evident. So please enjoy Oceans by Zoe and Jaden. Youth Minister Elizabeth Gonzalez here. Um, we're just about to witness youth worship taking place. We have Zoe and Jaden who will be performing for us Oceans. This has been quite a, a challenge. They were scheduled to perform physically, but unfortunately because of the flood that our church experienced, they're having to do this virtual through Zoom. So I just ask that you guys would be mindful and considerate of this and just you'll see very clearly through this video the heart of Zoe and Jaden through this worship and we just pray that that would impact you and you would feel God's presence. Thank you Zoe and Jaden on Oceans.
We can definitely give a round of applause to them and this this was extremely hard for them to do and they have been practicing for what almost two months doing this so please you know give them a nice round of applause congratulations zoe and Jaden. thank you okay so as i said today we are going to be entering into oh no nope. How do I get to the next one? <laughs> to Air Minister no. <laughs> To Arizona. <laughs> to Arizona. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience with OCJ Kids Ministry. And while I'm doing this, if anyone ever had any more questions about this amazing ministry that helps kids in foster in the foster system who you know have been left as orphans, um, this is the way to get it. OCJKids.org. Very simple to remember. This is their logo. So if any of the th thing during that time, you're able to do that. Okay. So, as you can see, I have the wonderful and gorgeous Arizona behind me. This was the Flying E Ranch where I had to stay. Now, I have to tell you, and I'm going to be completely transparent, if I would have known that God was sending me uh, to a desert, I probably would have said, heck no. <laughs> It was extremely hard. This is right in the United States of America. And I would have to say that um, I consider this a mission trip, though it was just an internship, because it was more intense than any of the mission trips I have ever gone to. And that is not to say that my other mission trips were considered light, easy things to do. Um, they were, they were, you know, mission trips that, I mean, you get dirty and you get sweaty and, and you meet people and they change your life and you feel the, the power of the Lord upon you. This was such an experience. So first I want to start off by how did God get me to Arizona? Because that in itself is, is a miracle. So I was just a college student and they were doing um, this kind of like this meet and greet in our cafeteria. And there was like maybe 20 different people. I mean, this is prior to COVID, of course. And um, these people, some have traveled so far from other countries just to, to meet us, just to, to talk about the ministries that they led. And I was led to this one table, and it wasn't because it uh, showed anything of interest to me. It was, it was simply because I was like, man, these people have traveled all over the world, and there's nobody at this table. So I felt like, you know, I was going to leave my group of, of, of people and, and go there. And I can just see that God used that kind of 
uh, position of my heart to lead me to the table that I needed to be. I still to this thing uh, to this day believe that God was keeping people away from that table just so that I can be there. So this ended up being a chaplaincy table. And I'm like, I have no interest in chaplaincy. Like I'm here studying Bible, but not to be a chaplain. I do not see myself as Miss Elizabeth. <laughs> Miss Elizabeth the chaplain. No, I, I, I couldn't imagine it. I really couldn't. But I went and I wanted to hear what they have to say. And there they asked me, what is your heart? Like, what is it that you're passionate about? What is it that you, you know, can imagine yourself, you know, doing and being a part of? And that was that I said, I said to them, well, I have a passion for, for youth in the foster system. I, I told them I, I always believed that I would be in ministry, but I also have a, a huge calling to, to those who, who are, are, are going through foster. And they're like, wow, how would you have, like, they were just like, like, I'm sure you didn't know this, but we just recently have this, this branch in chaplaincy that has to do with kids in the foster system. And I was like, really? And lo and behold, this man connects me with three different people. And I already knew that it was God sent because here I am approaching graduation and not knowing what am I gonna be doing next with my life, right? That's the huge, the huge question. So here I was, right? These three people. And of course I reached out to them and I'm able to meet with two out of the three. But one of them is in Arizona. And I'm like, I'll reach out to him, but you know, and he immediately is inviting me to this thing called Cowboys Camp, hence the E Ranch behind me, right? And <laughs> he never told me that it was in a desert, but it's in a desert. it doesn't matter. So he invited me, he's like, you need to come to Arizona. This is our camp. It's a, um, it, it takes place for like about a month. I ended up only going for like 14 days. But anyway, he's like, you know, you could come. And I'm like, no. So I didn't even, I didn't respond to his email. This email le was left there for like a month or so. Then um, because um, one of the programs that I was studying required for me to do observation hours, which means that I had to be absent from from chapel, which because I went to a Christian school, we had chapel every morning. And <laughs> something kept telling me, don't go to the observation hour. I need you in chapel today, right? So I'm listening. So I say, okay, I cancel my, my observation hours. I'm like, okay, God's going to speak to me. And then I'm hearing this message and I'm like, well, God, I know you were going to speak to me, so I'm not going to leave here until you do. The message really isn't speaking to me, but I'm even going to go to the altar because I believe there's something that you need to do with me, and it hadn't been done in the message, you know? <laughs> you know, um, and then there it was. He's speaking over the people that he's just doing an overall prayer, and he said, you know, so many of us struggle to discern what God's plan is for our lives. You're there and you're like, I have no idea what my next step is. I have no idea the plan of God, but I've come to realize that it's very simple to see what God wants you to do in your life. Look at the door that you could have never opened on your own and know that it was God himself who opened it for you. And I was like, oh, dang. And then immediately, Arizona, Arizona, Arizona was coming to my mind. And I was like, and I still left there saying, I'll pray about it. <laughs> I still left there saying, I'll pray about it. Then within a day, I was able to have the plane tickets. I was able to make all the reservations that I needed. I had all the money that I needed to do to get it done. Everything just fell right into place. And I couldn't deniably say that God wanted me in Arizona. So then I end up going to Arizona, a five hour flight, right in the middle of, of, of the day because they have a totally different time zone over there. Um, <laughs> right in the middle of the, the night, I mean, I left. They have a different time zone over there. But nothing prepared me for the heat. When I say, <laughs> When I say that I was like dying, it was day one. And I was saying, oh my gosh, I don't think I could do this. Like, 
it was so because I had never experienced desert heat. There's a difference because you know, I was going in the summer. So, you know, for them, they were like, wow, you know, it's never been this cool in the summer here. And I'm like, oh my, it was 107 degrees and it was never cooler for them here. They were used to 130, 130. And I'm like, 130, I will die in 130. I'll start cooking in 130. Like, I'm going to start being a roasted chicken in 130 degrees and you're still out here. This is a summer camp and we're just outside in the desert where there's sand and cactus all over. This was literally my scenery. This was literally what I was looking at every day. <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. So it was like day two that I was like, should I go home? Like, I don't think I could do this. It felt like an oven. Every time you stepped out the door, you felt like it wasn't like sunny heat. Like, oh, let's all wear sunblock it was like you step in an oven like that feeling like when you just stuff your head and i don't know why anyone would stuff their head in an oven but <laughs> it was like that you guys so it was day two and i mean i was just loving like the experience like so the way they do things in cowboys camp is that you meet one group home at a time which is basically an orphanage because they didn't they didn't have orphanages they have group homes so it's basically one orphanage at a time that you meet them and you meet and you have them for just one day but so much happens in one day they they bond with you in such a deep way and it's just unbelievable so you know like i'm meeting five kids at a time ten, i think our largest group was 10 kids a lot of times it's an all uh, boys um one and all girls one and even one of them was an all pregnant one which really hit me because, um, you know, some of these kids were just 14 years old. And then I was like, what, 14 years old? And then you kind of wonder, what could they have possibly have gone through that got them where they're at? Because you have to understand that kids who are put in these situations are there for, for only a few different reasons. One of them, they were, you know, given up, like just, you know, brought and said, you know, I'm not, taking care of this kid anymore. Others were rescued by, um, you know, uh, the uh, I don't know, human services departments, you know, child welfare. And it was because of severe neglect that somebody would have noticed to get them rescued. Others was abuse that could have been physical, mental, and, you know, other things. Um, and so you wonder, like, okay, how did they get to where they are? So these were the kids that I was dealing with and it seemed like story after story was mostly the same, an attitude of, I was given up, they didn't want me. You know, it was an attitude of like, I wasn't important enough for them to care. And it really wrecked you. But I wanna tell you the experience that I had on day three. <laughs> You know, it's funny because they always say, you know, God resurrected, he, he, he went to, he, he, he died, he, he, he resurrected, it all happened in three days. Well, let me tell you what happened on day three for me, <laughs> because a whole lot happened to me. So we, it was our first boy group, and I was really excited because I was like, wow, you know, all I've been doing is hanging out with the ladies, but now I'm, I'm interested in seeing how the perspective change, changes with how boys handle this situation, and it was exactly the same. Like they left me, they didn't want me. You know, when you ask them, what do you want? Uh, what are you gonna do with, your life, with the rest of your life? And they're just like, well, I'm just gonna age out of the system. Like it wasn't like hopes and dreams. It was, it was all like the same kind of story. Now saying that some of them did have hopes and dreams, some of them do, but I would say that a whole lot of them had the same attitude. It's like they just needed somebody to be pouring into them and they would just get so attached to you. Like, so, you know, they would love who you are. So anyway, it was in the boys camp, the boys uh, camp that, I ended up getting sick from the food. Um, um, they would give us burgers every day. So for 14 days, I had burgers. And I'm not even a crazy burger fan. Um, but I think the cook was also feeling kind of sick. Um, so this burger had, you know, like literally blood still in it. But, you know, everybody's starving. 
because I mean, you are out in the desert all day. Like, you know, we only have a three hour break in between the day, but it's literally from, I think it was like six in the morning to nine at night that we're out there, you know, and it's intense, you guys. Like, I, I'm not even an outdoors person. Like, <laughs> like, I'm not even an outdoors person in New Jersey. Like, and I'm here in the desert. Like, it was intense for me. Like, this girl can't handle that. Like, <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> So anyway, um, <laughs> so um, I start feeling like really sweaty and it was weird because I hadn't sweated the whole time while I was there. I know you think that's crazy because it's just, it's a different kind of heat. It's not warm heat. It's hot heat. I didn't sweat. It was just like, I felt like my body was on fire. That was a different thing. You know, are you wanting to share? Yeah, come on in. I love it when people share. So I've been to California before in the summer. And, like, it's, like, dry heat. So, like, it's, like, hard to explain. But, like, usually when it gets hot in, like, New Jersey or, like, more on the East Coast, it's, like, more humid. So it feels, like, sticky outside. And here it's just, like, dry. And then something I notice it actually gets, like, really chilly at nighttime. Which is like really weird. Well, I didn't experience that. <laughs> but thanks for your input. <laughs> it was just hot all the time. <laughs> I mean, it was more manageable at night for sure. Um, but it was still hot. <laughs> I never put like a sweatshirt on or anything like that. <laughs> so anyway, I ended up feeling really sick. And then um I I told the guy, I was like I just, I think I just need a, a break. And um, so he's like, okay, yeah, you know, and so he's managing the 10 kids all by himself. Um, you know, and they also have some staff with them, but still, you know, like I'm supposed to be with them. And like, you know, I, I, I laid there, um, I went into my room because we were on the ranch. So their rooms are really nice and they have air conditioning. Hallelujah. Um, <laughs> so I, you know, I went in and I was like trembling and I was like, all sweaty and I was like oh my gosh I feel like I'm gonna pass out and then I was like a little bit worried because then I was like oh my gosh if I pass out in my room nobody's gonna know like <laughs> I like started freaking out I was like oh snap like if I pass out right now like nobody's gonna ever like find me because nobody's gonna like like try to come into my bedroom like you know and I'm like especially since I'm like Saying I need to rest for the rest of the day. Like, uh oh, I'm like, so then I'm like there just praying. And fun fact, I think it's really funny now, but then it was really terrifying for me. But I actually used to have this actually is what got me out of this phobia but I actually and I, for those who don't know what phobia is it's like a dev like a like a deadly fear of something I have a deadly fear of throwing up like had a deadly fear of throwing up every time I wanted to throw up I usually would pass out so every time in my past wanting to throw up makes me pass out so that's a funny thing you know like every time I've been like really sick I just pass out on the floor instead of throwing up so that's kind of funny but in this scenario it wasn't really funny because I'm like oh my gosh I'm gonna throw up I'm gonna pass out like <laughs> but then I ended up you know just gagging throwing up and I threw up like it was like every second all night long just throwing up throwing up throwing up not to get you all nasty out so I remember I threw myself on my bed and um, and I was like, oh my gosh, like I've never been more sick in my life. Like what in the world? Like, like I didn't even get to sleep because I just kept, I couldn't stop. Like it was really bad. Like never been more sick in my life. Um, I didn't even tell my parents about it. Uh, I doubt they're gonna see this video and find out about it. Um, <laughs> But I didn't even tell them because I knew that they would be freaking out with how sick I, I was feeling. And this is when I had my supernatural experience. So there I was laying in the bed and just like crying out to God, like, I can't do this. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. And then I felt, I felt something grabbing my hand. And I remember writing about it and I wrote, it was such a strong but gentle touch. And when it touched me, 
I can feel the um, or what is it when you are when your your hair sticks up on your uh, on your hands or what is that called uh, your goosebumps. I felt the goosebumps all over my body, but especially as if it was a warm touch to my stomach and my back, which was, you know, because of how much I had gone, it was just like a lot of pain. And, um, and I, and I remember just at that instance, it was like a few minutes after that experience, uh, one of my good friends texted me because I, they had found out that I was sick and they were like, how are you feeling? You know, and I said, I've never been sick, more sick in my life. But I would call, I would consider it worthwhile to, to experience this again, just for this supernatural experience. And it was like what I was going through couldn't compare to what that touch felt like, which leads us to the Bible verse, which is the center of today's message, which is, sorry, I left my Bible all the way over here. Um, which is in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6, which says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So when we focus on this verse, this is what's going on. So we have Moses who um, he is you know leading the israelite people to the promised land of canaan there in a desert and they've been de desert wandering for i'm sure it hadn't reached the 40 years yet but in total it was 40 years and he's become too old and so joshua who was kind of like his little mentor mentee you know because moses was the mentor um he starts saying to his people, I'm too old. I can't keep leaving you guys. I'm not going to make it across to, to Canaan. And of course, this terrifies the people. They're like, oh my gosh, our leader is not going to make it? You know, this is the person that we're looking up to that has gotten them this far. And so he's like passing the baton to, to Joshua. But they, this is the message he says to all of them. He later then says it to Joshua directly. But he says, do not be afraid. Be of great courage. God doesn't leave you nor forsake you. So how does this apply to, to where we are today in our Christmas season? It's to remind us that he's always with us. You know, our Christmas season is going to possibly look a little different this year. I mean, so much has happened in 2020. But we have to know that he is never going to leave us or forsake us. Forsake us is almost like he's not going to turn his back and, and forget you. He's always going to remember you. He gave his gift of Jesus Christ to us. And we remember this on Christmas, this is how we commemorate it with this Christmas season and all that we do and the gifts we give to people. It's just like, it's our remembrance of the gift that will forever be with us. So I want you to be encouraged this Christmas season and knowing that he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He is always by your side. And this is the message that the kids and, and the youth of, of OCJ Kids Ministry and, and all of these foster homes and group homes, this is what we were trying to represent as, as we loved on them in that camp, even for just a day. The impression of who we are stayed with us because we were showing Jesus through us. And the thing about Jesus is he never leaves or forsakes you. So the challenging question is, is how have you represented that attribute of Jesus to others? An attitude of, of, of being there for the people who are hurting, being his hands and feet. And, and the thing with being there for a person is that you can't be there for a person and not be there for a person. It's only one or the other. 
So when it says he will never leave you or forsake you, we're human. We're not going to be there for a person all the time. It's inevitable. But that attribute of who he is teaches us, teaches us things like consistency, perseverance, diligence. It teaches us things like the character of Christ, which is present with his people. So those are the attributes that I want to leave with you today as we're coming to a conclusion in this message. And for those who were moved by the OCJ ministry and what they do for for foster kids, you know, they it doesn't end there. They provide so many resources. It's like they set them up for success. And one of the amazing ministries that are coming up that they do is the Christmas ministry. And I'm sure you can find out more about that online in the OCJ Kids org you can reach out to them you can donate to them you can tell people about their ministry it's amazing what they do for these kids they provide so many resources especially once they age out of the system yet haven't been adopted yet they they give them resources like like gift cards, bus passes. They try to set them up with other things like help them on the road to success. So it's an amazing ministry. So again, I will say that's ocjkids.org if you ever are interested. But it was such a blessing that left a lifelong impression on me through this experience. I've still to this day said, I don't know if I'd go back to Arizona. <laughs> maybe in the winter time, but it still was an impression that will stay with me forever. All right, so as we conclude and as we close, I want to pray for you guys, and I want to just do a general prayer, and I, as we always do, we, we're going to um, stay on here even after I finish the recording so that uh, we can enjoy fellowship with one another. Holy Spirit, we come before you and we give you thanks, Jesus, for today's message and what I was able to experience and what I was able to share with those who are listening. Jesus, I just ask that you continue blessing OCJ Kids Ministry and the kids in the foster homes all over the world. Jesus, that you would place people in their lives who can show the love of Jesus Christ to them, the kind of love that is consistent perseverance and is with the people who are hurting, those who serve, those who are the hands and the feet of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for never leaving us, because this is a message we need to hear on this Christmas season, where some of us may feel a little bit more alone on Christmas due to COVID and the regulations that need to be followed. But Jesus, this truth stays the same. You never leave us nor forsake us, Jesus. And we praise you, Jesus, for this truth. Lord God, give us the strength to be your hands and your feet. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So take care and God bless you. We're so happy you were able to be a part of our series, Hands and Feet, and we will be continuing it at the same time next week. See you there. God bless.